welcome to Math 8 BCPS TV style. I'm Mr. Parker, and I'll be your host as we work through today's lesson, which is all about applying the Pythagorean theorem. I've been trying to tell you that it's important, so here we are. So why study distance and square roots? Distance and square roots are closely related. They can help people do things like calculate the most efficient flight path and build satellites, which get really great reception. Satellites are formed by using quadratic equations, which is something you will learn about next year in algebra. Today's lesson will cover these objectives, which are the same as the week 9 of the Math 8 BCPS Remote Learning Packet, which is the week of June 1st. Students will apply the Pythagorean Theorem to find the distance between two points on a coordinate plane, and use the knowledge of the Pythagorean Theorem to visually demonstrate the equivalence of radical expressions. For example, the square root of 18 is actually equivalent to 3 times the square root of 2. Our first objective is to apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points on a coordinate plane. So let's think about it. What's the same and what's different about these two triangles? Here's what Kayla said was the same and was different. The thing that is the same is that it's basically the same triangle, except the things that are different, the one on the right isn't in a graph, and it doesn't have graph points, it just says the lengths of the sides, and the one on the right, the left, doesn't, um, doesn't have the length of the slides, it only has the graph points connecting the lines. So let's learn about it. To find the distance from A to B, it would be helpful to have a right triangle so we could use the Pythagorean theorem. Thankfully, these points are on the coordinate plane, so we can find a vertical distance and a horizontal distance between A and B, and then that would make the distance from A to B the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Pretty nifty. So what we need to do is we need to find these lengths. So what I'm going to do is subtract the x-coordinates and the y coordinates to find the vertical and horizontal distances here. Um, my coordinates for b are 4, 6, and the coordinates for a are negative 2, 3. So I'm going to subtract my x coordinates to find my horizontal distance, which would be 4 minus negative 2, which is 6. And I'm going to subtract my y coordinates to find my vertical distance, which would be 6 minus 3, or 3. And because I have a right triangle, I can use these in the Pythagorean theorem, which says that if we have a right triangle, that the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Uh, in other words, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to substitute in my values 3 and 6 for a and b, and it actually doesn't matter which one is a and which one is b because of the commutative property of addition. So I'm going to substitute those in. And then I'm going to evaluate my exponents to get 36 plus 9. And I find that c squared or the hypotenuse squared should be equal to 45. Now, because this is a distance, I only really care about the positive number that I square to give me 45, even though there is a negative number as well. To show you the algebra, I did put the plus or minus on my square root of 45. And I know, estimating here, that my distance should be somewhere between 6 and 7 because 45 is between 36 which is 6 squared and 49 which is 7 squared and I confirmed in my calculator that that is about 6 and 7 tenths. Then what I can do is I can actually measure the distance on the coordinate plane so if you see the bracket at the bottom that goes from negative 3 to somewhere between 3 and 4 that has a length of 6 and 7 tenths and I had a lot of fun animating this in PowerPoint again. If you've been watching these videos, you know I love my PowerPoint. And if I take that distance and slide it up, you can see that that length actually is 6 and 7 tenths. Pretty cool. So let's try one out. Here, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you for the distance from B to C. So same picture. The only difference is instead of going from A to B, we are going to go from B to C. Our procedure is going to be almost identical to the last problem. Our first step is to break this down into a vertical component and a horizontal component so that the distance between B and C is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Then we are going to subtract the X coordinates and the Y coordinates to get what those distances actually are. So 
when I subtract the x coordinate of b, which is 4, from the x coordinate uh, minus the x coordinate of c, which is 3, I get a distance of 1. And when I do the same thing for the y coordinates, 6 to negative 1 is a distance of 7 units. Excellent. Now we can use the Pythagorean theorem because this is a right triangle. So I'm going to use a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Doesn't matter which one is a, which one is b, they are both the legs. So I'm going to substitute my values in for the legs. I am going to evaluate my exponents. 7 squared is 49, 1 squared is 1. Add them together and you get 50. And I need to find a number that's squared that gives me 50. And I know 7 squared is 49, which is pretty close. 8 squared is 64, that's kind of close. Uh, there is no integer that I can square that would give me 50. So I'm just going to use the square root symbol to show that that is the number that is squared to give me 50. And there is a positive one and a negative one. This is a distance, so I'm only going to use the positive number there. Um, and if I wanted to, I could put that in my calculator to get a decimal approximation. I know it's going to be pretty close to 7, slightly over, and it does turn out to be 7 and 1 tenth. So my length here is the square root of 50. Uh, just like in the last screen, I'm going to show a distance of 7 and 1 tenth on that number line. So counting from negative 3 to a little bit more than positive 4 would be a length of 7 and 1 tenth. And if I turn that distance and rotate it onto that shape, you can see that that length is about 7 and 1 tenth. Pretty cool. Our second objective is to use knowledge of the Pythagorean theorem to visually demonstrate the equivalence of radical expressions. For example, the square root of 18 and 3 times the square root of 2. So let's think about it. What's the same about these two triangles? What's different? Is there a transformation that could transform or map one to the other? You may have noticed that they are both right triangles. You may have noticed that the red larger triangle is three times the size of the smaller black triangle. This means that there is a dilation with a scale factor of three that will transform the black triangle to the red triangle. Pretty cool how this is all connected. In the think about it, we saw that the red triangle was three times larger than the black triangle. This is easier to see for the legs, which have lengths of two and six. And I'm just gonna put those in here, two and six, than it is for the hypotenuses, especially because we have this square root notation. If we apply the Pythagorean theorem to each triangle to find the lengths of the hypotenuses, or is it hypotenuse, we can find that the lengths are the square root of eight for the smaller hypotenuse and the square root of 72 for the larger hypotenuse. 72 is nine times larger, not three times larger than eight. So let's look at the picture. We can see that three of these green triangles will fit along the hypotenuse of the larger red triangle. That's pretty interesting. So another way we can say this is that the square root of 72 is equal to three times the square root of eight. We can check this calculator to confirm the square root of 72 is about eight and 49 hundredths. And if I put in three times the square root of eight, I get eight and 49 hundredths. And our picture helps us to see why that is working. This is very similar to having multiple ways to write the same fraction. For instance, one half and four eighths are the same number, but they are just represented slightly differently. The square root of 72 and three times the square root of eight are really the same number, they're just written differently. This process of finding equivalent square root expressions is similar to another process you may be familiar with of simplifying fractions. Here we have 72 96 I know that both 72 and 96 are divisible by 12, so an equivalent fraction would be 6 eighths, where the numerator and denominator of the original fraction were divided by 12. Similarly, the square root of 72 is equal to 3 times the square root of 8. Those radicals are equivalent, or those square roots are equivalent, even though they look different and have different numbers in them. And the picture helps us make that connection. So let's try another one. Here we have some more similar right triangles. What I'm going to do is find the length of the hypotenuse for AD and the hypotenuse or length of AE using the Pythagorean theorem. And I get that the square root of 13 is the smaller hypotenuse and the square root of 208 is the larger hypotenuse. 
Now I'm going to use the picture to figure out how many square roots of 13 will fit in square root of 208. So my handy dandy PowerPoint animation. Oh, look at it, look at it, look at it. It looks like there will be four square roots of 13 that would be equivalent to the square root of 208. Pretty nifty. And to think about it, we saw that a red triangle was three times larger than the black triangle. We use the Pythagorean theorem and knowledge about similarity to show some equivalent square root expressions, namely that root 72 is equivalent to three times root eight. If we take another look, there are actually some even smaller right triangles that we can fit along these sides. The blue triangles shown have legs of length one. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse. We can see that the length of these hypotenuses, hypotenuse, are the square root of two. So how many blue triangles will fit along the black triangle? Ooh, okay, so we have two. That means that the square root of eight is equivalent to two square roots of two. How about for the larger red triangle? We had that the hypotenuse was the square root of 72. How many root twos will fit along that hypotenuse? Well, there's two, three, four, five, six. Ah, ah, ah. Six square roots of two will fit along the hypotenuse that has a length of the square root of 72. So the square root of 72 can also be written as six root two. We said earlier that this process of finding equivalent square root expressions is similar to another process, simplifying fractions, and we started with the fraction 72 96. We simplified that to 6 eighths. Now, that expression is also the same as 72 96, but it is not simplified all the way because I can divide each factor, by, I'm sorry, the numerator and denominator by 2 to get 3 fourths. Now we can say that this fraction is in simplest form. The same thing is true about square root expressions. We had the square root of 72, which we said was equivalent to three square roots of eight, which is equivalent to six square roots of two. So here we have three radical expressions that are all equivalent to each other. Now, six times the square root of two is the most simplified because it involves using the smallest possible right triangles to fit into that shape. We're going to take a quick peek behind the curtain here and see how we can simplify square roots algebraically. Now, this isn't the outcome that we need for the lesson, but just a little tip that can help you next year when you get to algebra. So here we have the square root of 72, and we already saw from the picture that that's equal to 3 times the square root of 8. Algebraically, how could we understand that those two are equivalent? Well, if we look at the factors of 72, one of the factors of 72 is 9, which is a perfect square. So we can rewrite this expression as the square root of 9 times the square root of 8. And we know that the square root of 9 is 3. Let's look at another equivalence that we wrote today. The square root of 8 is equal to 2 times the square root of 2. So we could have rewritten the square root of 8 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is 2 times the square root of 2. And last but certainly not least, the square root of 72 was equal to 6 times square root of 2. So what are some factors of 72 that we might be able to find the square root of? We already knew one factor, which was 9, but that is actually not the largest perfect square factor of 72, which is why we were able to simplify this even further. So the largest perfect square factor of 72 is 36. If we rewrite this as the square root of 36 times the square root of 2, and then we took the square root of 36, we would get 6 times the square root of 2. Earlier, I mentioned that this is the most simplified form of this square root, and that is because we have factored out the largest perfect square factor, in this case, 36.